In the studio today, we have Rufus Paisley from the beloved rock club, Rollers. Now, Rufus, tell us, how do you keep a place like Rollers open for 100 years? Ooh, um, that's a great question. You have an opportunity to save Rollers. And all you got to do is talk to Tyler and tell him what's really going on. But if you insist on being stubborn, we will acquire the property eventually. Mom and Dad put everything into this place. We grew up here. We grew up here because they can never go home. What are you so worried about, dude? We are on our backs right now with three lawyers standing over us. You know what they have? You know what they have in their hands? Socks full of nickels, man. Sari Khan with Hollywood First Look. Joining me right now are Johnny Ray Gill, Kevin Bigley, and Isaiah Smallman from the movie Rollers. Congratulations on this film, you guys. Thank you very much. Isaiah, I want to start with you since you are writer and this is your directorial debut. What was the inspiration behind Rollers? Yeah, it was uh, it was largely because I, you know it's not super fun. Other than that, I just loved music and loved live music, and I was sad because some of my favorite music venues were closing. This is pre-COVID, obviously. Uh, and as I was making the film, I started to realize that also it had a lot to do with the way I was brought up because um, I sort of grew up in a venue of sorts. My dad uh, was a, a musician and. You know, when I was about 15, it was all based in a big nonprofit, but that was my life. And then when I was about 15, we moved away from that. Um, and I kind of watched him processing through that and how hard it was to sort of have this place and this musical scene uh, disappear. And so, um, and, and, you know, wanting to keep that going and not being able to. So I think I didn't realize it till after I had already written it, but that, that was the big part of it. So anyway, grieving the loss of that. Yeah. And the music was epic in this Thank film. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Was that was, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of the music. It, it, I was saying earlier, big shout out to Ural Thomas, who's a, a, a Portland native of, of Johnny. But yeah, he, we, we got in touch with him. I saw him live in LA and I was like, I got to build a movie around this guy because he had so many freaking great songs and um, we got access to basically everything he's ever done. And I, use the crap out of it, so. <laughs> so Johnny, let's jump to you. We've seen you in a bunch of things, but I want to know what is it about this character that stands out for you? What stands out is the copious amounts of beer he gets to drink, um, and the fact that he loves music. Um, and, you know, given the arc of the character, he's not afraid to, you know, dig into his demons and you know, see where, see where it's going to take you, you know what I mean? So it was a great script. I got to work with great people. So, you know, it was a blessing. Kevin, levity is kind of your thing. So I'm curious how you go about building a character like this that balances that comedy and drama. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think Donnie's a cool character because he's in his own movie. Um, I always love characters in movies that are that are in their own movie to a degree. So yeah, I think Isaiah and I were talking about um, Bill Murray and Tootsie as being like a huge influence on this. It's like his own his own thing, you know, like this this like orbiting planet that comes in there here and there. Um, so yeah, I just really like being able to bounce in and and uh, be funny or not, you know, Donnie, like, uh, is just kind of his own alien, uh, you know, who's doing his own thing. So it was really fun to be able to kind of play that role. Well, and what I loved about it too, you guys, it looked like everybody was having so much fun on set. Like you could see it coming through in the characters. And it, it almost felt to me like a modern day Empire Records with a little, with a little twist. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. That was uh, that was an early comp for sure when I was pitching it around. It's a great because it's that it's that local vibe where like people know each other and you sense while you're watching it that people really that people really do you know each other and you know it, it becomes unclear like what was planned what wasn't planned and it was scripted but there was also a lot of fun on set where we were just kind of coming up with stuff so. What is it about this story that resonates most with you personally? Um, the internal, uh, 
uh, journey about moving on. I think that's really a tough thing for a lot of people to do, whether that's with family or in romantic relationships, friendships, or in this case with a music thing. Um, especially when things have been inside of your family or inside of, or you've been, you know, interacting with said thing for such a long period of time. You know, Rollers was a hundred years that it was inside of his family. To be able to go through that journey and have the, uh, the fortitude, the internal fortitude to figure out where your life is truly supposed to go, to have that self-awareness, I think is a powerful thing. So that's the thing that resonates the most with me with the movie and the character. I'm glad you guys made this movie and thank you so much for taking the time out to talk. Everyone, make sure you go check out Rollers. It's out now. I'm Sari Cohen. See you next time. Deep down, are you more scared of losing Rollers or saving it? Maybe it's the universe telling us we're selling out. But we're a concert venue selling out is what we're supposed to try to do. Yeah, but not like that.